Hello, my friend, and welcome to another episode of the Red Delta Project podcast, where we teach you how to maximize your results with minimalist approaches to diet and exercise, helping you achieve a higher state of fitness independence. My name is Matt Shefferly, founder of the Red Delta Project, author of several books, including Grind Style Calisthenics, and of course, Fitness Independence. Today, we're talking about one of the four primary disciplines that make up the Grind Style Calisthenics approach. That is of weighted or loaded calisthenics. I always thought the whole weighted calisthenics was kind of a, a weird term for it. Like all calisthenics are weighted. You're using your own body weight. But loaded calisthenics or adding extra weight to your body is a unique way that you can add extra resistance for the sake of building muscle and strength. And it has its pros and its cons, which we'll talk about. Some exercises are better to load than others, which we'll also talk about. And there's also better and worse ways that you can go about programming and using weighted calisthenics, which can either help or hurt your muscle building journey, which we'll finish off at the end of today's episode. So first and foremost, pros and cons. Why might you or might not want to do weighted calisthenics? Well, when it comes to building muscle and strength with calisthenics, well, any type of training really, you need progressive overload. You need to make your muscles work progressively harder in both time and tension over the course of your training career. You can't just do endless reps, nor can you just pile on lots of extra resistance and expect to get very far from it. You need a little bit of both. And when it comes to classic calisthenics training, progressive calisthenics has your back, where you ascend to higher level of advanced techniques to apply more resistance to your muscles. And this is a great way to go about it because you don't really need a lot of extra equipment and you also develop other qualities, not just strength and muscle building at the same time. You could develop greater range of motion, you get more mobility, you get more stability, control, a whole host of other qualities, right? However, that can be frustrating for some people. It can also take quite a bit of time, especially frustrating if you're just saying, I just wanna make my muscles work harder. I don't care about the other things. And that's where weighted calisthenics can come in. Because with weighted calisthenics, you don't need to ascend to a higher level of technique. You just simply add more weight to your body and there you go. Now the bonus is you don't have to develop those other qualities. The downside is you may not be developing those other qualities even though you do need them later on down the road. So it's not a question so much of one is better than the other, of progressive calisthenics versus weighted calisthenics. Each one is a tool in your toolbox. So use the hammer or the screwdriver as appropriate to your situation and switch and swap back and forth depending on what your situation calls for. One more little potential downside to weighted calisthenics is it is a little bit more equipment dependent. And so if you get into calisthenics because you like that whole aspect of train anytime, any place, anywhere, I like the freedom and independence of it. Once you're saying I train primarily only with using certain kinds of equipment, now you're anchoring yourself down. The second you've got a chunk of weight in your room and you're saying, this is what I need in order to maximize myself, you're saying, I can train optimally only in this place and the times I'm in this place, so you're anchored. You're not quite as free and independent. Again, it depends on who you are. Some people, that's a big hindrance. Some people, they don't really care. So use it to adopt or discard depending on your preferences and your situation. When it comes to loading up your exercises, there's a ton of different ways you can do it. You can load most any body weight exercise you can imagine because we've got weight vests, we've got weighted backpacks, we've got ankle and wrist weights, we've got dip belts, we've got a ton of different stuff. In the past, I used to do push-ups with sandbags on my back in order to add resistance onto my push-ups. So there's lots of different ways you can go about this and all of them work pretty darn well. But for my money, there's only three primary loading mechanisms that really should make up the bulk of your weighted calisthenics. And those who have been with RDP for a while will recognize this was the foundation of my Triad Muscle Revolution, which was a free ebook I came out with. It's one of the first things I ever wrote. There's a link down below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, you can download it for free if you want a good laugh at my old writing style. But these three movement patterns that you can load are the easiest, the safest, and the most effective loading patterns that you can use for weighted calisthenics. Essentially what we're doing is we're loading the three movement tension chains. So we got push, pull, and squat. The reason why we're loading these is because they make up the bulk of your strength 
and muscle building potential for getting the most out of these exercises. So first and foremost, we have weighted pulling exercises, which of course, weighted pull-ups. Then for push, we have weighted dips. And then for the squat chain, we have loaded unilateral exercises. So this is lunges, shrimp squats, pistol squats, Bulgarian split squats, and so on. So first push and pull, we've got pull-ups and dips. One of the great things about these is that they take all of your joints in your upper body through an extensive range of motion, great for building muscle. They work all of the major muscles in your upper body, so that's good for building muscle and strength. They also load the same way, which is with a simple dip belt. You can use a dip belt that you can get in an equipment store or you can just use a rope or a martial arts belt. I've seen people use that as well or a chain. So that helps you break out of a little bit of the dependence on specific types of equipment. These movements are also very heavy in their own right. So usually you don't need a whole lot of extra resistance, especially if you're using unstable supports like gymnastics rings or grind straps, because the workload on your muscles to stabilize requires a lot less additional weight to adequately work your muscles. So since you don't really need a whole lot of extra weight, you can use most anything you find hanging around. You rocks, work. I've had um, those canvas sail bags that I just load books into and stuff because usually for a lot of folks, 20, 30 pounds or so will be more than adequate for extra loaded resistance on dips and pull-ups, especially when you're using unstable supports like gymnastics rings. When it comes to the lower body, that can be quite a challenge because once you start experimenting with loaded uh, exercises for the legs. The legs are extremely strong, which is why like powerlifting uses deadlifts and squats and you're lifting hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But again, when you're looking at needing a lot more weight, you're also needing a lot more equipment and creates a bit more of that lifestyle anchor. So if you're using one leg at a time or primarily one leg at a time, suddenly you don't need nearly as much weight. I've also done things like uh, lunges with just rocks that I find in the river, which can be a very humbling experience. You can also use, again, things that you find around the home, like heavy uh, uh, toolboxes, anything that has a good amount of weight to it that you can load up. And plus, you're holding on to this with your hands. So again, it's very easy and it's very safe to load because you're not putting it necessarily on your back. You're keeping it in the front of you. So that way you have a good sense of balance about where you're adding that extra load of resistance. The other benefit to these types of loaded exercises is they're very easy to add, subtract, or uh, reduce the resistance uh, of the weight. Because usually when we're talking about something that we wear, like a weight vest or something, it can be very tedious to pull out little tiny weights. And if we're like, okay, I've got 40 pounds on this weight vest and I need it to be uh, 20 pounds, that's a project. All these little compartments and stuff, even if it's five pounds at a time, it's very tedious to swap from one exercise to the other. But when you're using a dip belt or you're just hanging on to something, it's as simple as just putting it down and picking up a different weight. So these reasons and more are why I recommend that the primary weighted exercises that you use are weighted dips, weighted pull-ups, and some sort of weighted unilateral exercise, again, like Bulgarian split squats, lunges, or weighted pistol squats. And finally, we wanna talk about a little bit on how do we program our weighted calisthenics. Well, if you're using the grind style method, what you wanna do is put the bulk of your weighted calisthenics training into your grind phase, the third phase. So you have your uh, tension control phase or your overcoming isometrics that you may be using, your stability phase where you're building up that stability and coordination. And then when you're into your grind phase, I recommend practicing the exercise that you're wanting to do, like let's say dips in this case, but do it without extra weight first. Let that nervous system kind of ramp up, get used to the range of motion, do the exercise as well as possible. Then move on to the weighted exercise after one or two warm up sets that you're only going to about 50% of fatigue. You don't really want to make your muscles work too terribly hard just yet. Because then when you go into the weighted stuff, what you're essentially doing is you're adding extra weight to challenge your ability to maintain the same quality of technique. You don't wanna just look at it like saying, okay, I've got weight on my dip belt here that's automatically gonna make me bigger and stronger. 
if your weight is compromising your quality of technique, it's kind of like you're taking two steps forward and two steps back. One of the more common ways this is done is especially if you're uh, going with a shorter range of motion. So when you use extra weight, uh, first, if you haven't done it before, I recommend go a little bit lighter than you may think, because usually it doesn't take that much. The, one of the benefits of dips, pull-ups, and unilateral leg exercises is they're hard exercises in their own right. So it doesn't take a whole lot of extra weight to load on a substantial amount of resistance. So go light and see if you can maintain the same level of quality in your technique, because that's what the weight really is there for is to say, great, you can do these dips really well and with a big range of motion and really stable, you're looking good. Now let's put 20 pounds on a dip belt and see if you can do the exercise in a carbon copy exact replication of what you just did. Because you're probably going to find it's not quite as good as it was before. And that's what you wanna do is add the weight on, say, oh, the quality of my technique is down a little bit, and then from then on out, your goal isn't to add more weight or even more reps, it's to improve the quality of your technique so the weighted version is as good as the weightless version. And then finally, if you wanna add in the hypertrophy phase for the grind style workouts, just do the weightless version of what you were just doing for as many reps as possible for one to two sets. So there you go, all the things that I think everyone should understand and know about weighted calisthenics training, how to maximize it, when to use it, and of course, if you are trying to get as much out of it with as low risk for injury. If you have questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. Don't forget, check out my book, Grind Style Calisthenics, for more ways on how to progress up to weighted calisthenics, if you're trying to progress up to that level, and how to program these things in a very smooth, safe, and effective way calisthenics workout for building specifically muscle and strength. Thank you very much for watching slash listening. Talk to you next week. Till then, be fit, live free.